again, this is maybe, maybe in this case, it's a north-south line, and I'm turning on, and then my arms are east and west. Okay? Now, what I want you to do, though, is, uh, I think we'll start with body punching. So, when I do a body, when I do a straight, it's going to be straight punching. And we're going to start with a body punch. A straight body punch always starts from your solar plexus and straight in. And again, look, look here, right? If my legs are this way and this is a, a nor, you know, like a, a cross pattern, there's a triangle, like, right? If my feet make one line, which is the base of the triangle, and then I have a line going from my feet to a solar plexus and from my feet to my solar plexus, that's a triangle, right? But I don't want to punch on the triangle. I'm going to punch straight down the middle. Again, that's why I want to come from my solar plexus and in straight. Okay, so right now, I'm doing the first punch, and I'm doing just the punch itself, which is chun, which means penetrating, which means from the center, still down the straight line. From the center, straight line. And so from here, in. Now, there's the corkscrew. Right? I talked also about the chop. You already know about the chop, right? Because no matter what the distance is between your fist and the person, you're going to get more power by corkscrewing. Why? Because a corkscrew is like a... It's like a spring. Yeah, it's, it's just, I'm trying to think what the, what the actual term is for it. But it's spring-like. It's a spiral. That's the term. It's a spiral. If you stretch a spiral out, it's longer than the distance. And remember that the longer something travels on a distance, the more power it gains. Which if I just go, that's a certain amount of power. If I do that, right, that extra little distance that I get because it's corkscrewing gets more power. So chun, which means penetrate, is coming from for a body shot from here straight in. Right now, I'm not so much worried about my rear hand, right? I'm just having you focus on the actual punching one, so I kind of just leave it down here. The old days, we did it with the arm extended back because, again, we're trying to get this cross pattern, and we're also trying to teach you that you're not punching here, right? You're punching here. You see the difference? So by doing this, just like, you know, you want to feel your, your nuts hitting your thigh, this is going to help you get that. So now, now, you have just the punch by itself. You have the punch where you punch out to give you some control. And then we have this beam, which you don't see in modern martial arts that much anymore. But it's, it's a back fist, right? We see a spinning back fist because it has a lot of power. This one's not going to have a lot of power, so I'm just going to pick up my elbow and hit out. But you see what it, one of the things that it does is it turns me all the way to make sure that I'm getting this subject. So again, this is beam. B means to whip or to flog. So powerful is that if I'm here, just doing this, right? They go, well, why wouldn't I want to do this when I can jab? But remember, I'm doing this from the side position, so I'm not just doing, I'm not just flicking it like a back fist, like in point. I'm going. Do you see the position? Put your hand up. Open your hand. Right. In other words, I'm not doing this. Right. I'm not going here. I'm going. Feel the difference? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, and again, not everything's going to kill somebody. So I may land that. Right? Boom. It didn't kill him. But it certainly distracted him enough that the next punch came. Right? I go, boom. And again, if let's say he was punching me, well, I'm just using it as a deflection. Right? I'm using it, you know, maybe hit him, maybe not hit him. Definitely, I didn't get hit. And it opens him up for this, or this opens him up for this. So I come up, bean, chun, bean, chun. And the beans can be a distraction. They can be if he tries to punch me. Cross pattern. So you'll notice that when I'm doing this, and this is a very classical, well, I'm a way to do it. This is Chande Sun's. This is after you learn a side stance, the first thing you learn was bean chun. Uh, so we have our side stance, right? You can be aware, right? Yeah. 
sit down, start doing your chores. And I'm going to start focusing on what you're getting so you go to body chores, right? Right. Okay, so do a couple just so we can establish what we're doing here. Okay. So leave that alone now. This is the first one we're starting. So we're going to start with this body, body shots. Okay? What I want to do is I want to talk about cutting the point. Did some of this, I'm going to do a, a little bit of a review and then I'm going to add some new stuff today. So, what I can do is I do my own chin, not only on top, but in and down. So I go. So if he goes to chin me, right? Don't be frightened, okay? Yeah. yeah. You see how I'm stopping your punch and hitting you? So he goes to right? You see how I'm blocking you? Yeah, I can do this with this. So I can do it either with the regular, well, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is the lock, which is kind of like the bong right. in, in Shin right? Yeah. Right. Or I can do it with my regular chun against chun, which is this one. Right? So he comes in. You see how I win every time, right? He doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, again, with the, you're asking at the wheel. Right? I can do just a little, just enough that it doesn't hit me. Mm -hmm. Right? That, for example, sets up things. Right? And you were saying, well, he comes with another punch, right? Well, I can do a wheel this way. Or he comes with the extra next punch. Right? And my wheel then becomes this. So oh, then it becomes this. That's looks familiar. Yeah. Right? I mean, for, think about it. He comes this way, right? Then I go here. Because of the second one, when I come here, it's also the ball, right? Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if I went this way and then he came, I can go this way or I can go this way. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. Figure out target selection, right? Eight character true essence. First four is that you're stretching out the body. Well, you know, you're stretching out the arms while pulling away the body. But the second one is you don't hit a place that doesn't have a pulse. That means, you know, like I'm not just. I'm selective about what I hit, right? That's why you hit the liver, or you hit the spleen, or you hit the solar plexus, or you hit the bladder, or you hit the chin or the jaw, you know, connection, right? And it's not a modern concept, right? We were with Lowe, and Lowe was picking those spots. Mm -hmm. Even if he wasn't saying the spleen and everything, he was hitting, he was hitting me, actually. It was kind of suck. So, I have small motions, right? But we have big wheeling motions. <laughs> right? We have this thing, which you see in the forms. Right? And what that does is it's it's like cotton wrapping around. So you not only wrap, you move inside. Yeah. Okay. If I do this, I'm gonna lose you, right? Yeah. But if I do this, I'm gonna lose you, right? If I go away, I mean, there's only so much here, yeah. right? If I stay around here, the chance of losing you. Yeah. But think about that. I think that's cool. It's kind of kind of kind of sucky thing, but it, yeah. you know, we always did that, and then it was always followed by chun chun chun. chun. And again, it's too much. Right, and then. If suddenly I go, bam, 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 yeah, see, it sucks, right? Yeah. You would have hit me. So the answer was yes. In other words, it's small and it's big. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a wheel this way. And I already kind of told you, well, there's a wheel this way, right? Because mm -hmm. I can always go. Oh, but it's not really, like, this is, this looks good when you're doing two-man sets because then he punches again, you know, and, and it looks like cool because I'm not killing him, which means I can continue the two-man set. Right. 
But really, if he's here, it's not here. I mean, that's good for clearing it. But really, it's... Did you feel the difference now? It sucks because one, that everything down here is soft. And two, that's your shame. So, you know, one of the possible... I, I always told you, like, just stand there for a second. Just stand there for a second. How is not me just, like, running up to him and going, oh, no. like... Anyway, I told you, like, sometimes what pow is, is, is here. Sometimes pow is to give you the body mechanics for, like, the shouldering. But it's also this one. Right? Yeah. So he goes with this one. Okay. Yeah. Instead of coming from the top down, I'm going from the bottom up. You feel that, right? Produces like yeah. car. It's like yeah, well, something it's, is it's, it's like a Charlie horse, you know. It's like a, you know. It's like a short circuit, really. Yeah, well, it's just kind of. It's like yeah. you know, like we were talking about, you know, the tiger where you, and it hurts, you know, there and it hurts, right? And then uh, the marble points in Kalari, you know, that Chris was saying like you know, he was getting hit in similar places. Like, God, I go, yeah, I can relate to that. You know, it's, and again, it's. Trust me, I'm not magical. I don't have any supernatural forces. I'm just finding good places to hit you. So I have the pow, and I have the pocket, which is also a kind of pow underneath, right? So he comes with the other one. I have the pow, and the pocket pow. Is this? Is it yeah. right behind yeah. the Charlie Horse? Okay, so again, I have from the outside, I have from the top down, and I have from the bottom up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Even you do this way, this way, this hard still. It still hurts. Well, you know, so there's this, right, in the system. And I told you one of the applications of this is, you know, you grab my wrist. I grab the other one. All right. Grab the other hand. Just, All right. Right, so just, this is one application of this, right, which is you grab and I. Put you in the joint lock, you remember that joint lock? Yep, yep. Right, another one is, I come on the top and do that and poke down at you, right? But another application of this is if, if it's the down, it's also the up. So in other words, when you're here, this is something that we have to also work to condition, right? You can feel it. Right, it's the same thing like, um, like that one, right? Of course. Yeah. Or, you know, there. So, so this is a core part of the crane. It's down, but it's also up. So in other words, there's down and then there's up. They're both legitimate ways of looking at this motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I'm doing this to show it. We can go from a couple of different places, but these are good basic drills. Um, and they're basic ideas too. So like he's hitting my body, right? So I have a wheel in hand. I can be what we call opening, right? I'd be opening. Because remember if I'm in a fighting stance, the opening the doors. Yeah. But I can also with the wheel in hand do what we call closing. Because I'm closing the doors, but what that does is it gives me the back. So same punch. This is, this is your left, right? Right. So, I can do this wheel hand that I can open. I can do this wheel hand and it's technically closing, but what it's doing is it's giving me a back. Um, but another thing also is, he comes this way, he can cut, and there's a couple ways to cut. One is I use my stance also, so as I'm coming this way, and you see what happens is because I'm in side stance, and I'm coming from the outside, I'm hitting you. So if he goes with the other one, maybe just for the purpose of getting the camera angle, right? It's not here. Is that one? Well, that won't cut it. It won't literally cut the line. But if I turn, you can see how I'm hitting you, and 
you're not doing me, so he comes with the other one, right? And I turn, okay? Yeah. So this is chun against chun. But another one here, right, is to cut from the top down. How do you do that? I'll show you. One way is to do the chun, and it just sinks a little bit. So it's got both a chun and a cup value to it. In other words, in and down. Now I can do it this way. This is a standing, uh, not standing fist, this is a ping, it's a flat fist. Right? If I do it with a lock, which is the standing fist, this is like, you know, when we talk about the blades on the arms. So I go down. Right? This looks a little familiar right now. Mm -hmm. So, but another way to do this is what we call the chop. This is what I'm turning down. And again, we have that spiral, spiral thing. thing. And he's going to tell you, he feels when I do that. <laughs> So he comes with the other one, for example, right? I have cutting on the outside. I have from the pin down. I have this with the standing fist in and down. And I have the chop in and down, right? Chop means thrusting. So he comes here. Again, I have cutting on the outside. I have cutting from the top down. I have cutting from the top down with the, the standing fist. This is a little bit like that. Bone chuan that we were doing, you know, the other day, um, and then I have the chop one, which is with the turning, and the two things is that the turning helps yep. move the arm out of the way, and it also adds to my power, and that's going to end up this way, so I get that spiraling effect. So um, this is cutting versus straight punches to the body. We're going to drill this. Yep. I go, wa ka fan pao pao. So I go, wa ka fan pao pao. I go, wa ka fan pao pao. It's very commonly together. Obviously, if I use my ulit, my waist more, 
and our thrives. Okay? That's using the pal to open him up. So in other words, maybe I got punched and he did one really successful one, he hit me. But it's not over because I'm still going to use my u lick by turning my waist and I'm going to use the vector of lower to top you know, and I'm opening him up. Instead, when I go here and you cut me, instead of coming with this one, which you're expecting, I do this one. You can't do cut from here, can you? No. No. Right? No. Not before I go boom. Right? Or straight. Right? Go in here. Knock me down, right? No. So again, I have that version of it, right? Where I just go in. Yeah. And then if I want to come here, so I do this. Right? Now it's with your back. That's one version of the one pop. Then we're going to do Jugang Pao. Jugang Pao. Jugang, looking in the mirror. Pao, tossing or, or throwing up. Jugang Pao. Uppercut. Uppercut. Uppercut, okay? And then Jugang Pao. Jugang Pao. Why? Because you're looking in your palm. It's like a mirror in your palm. Jugang Jugang Pao. You can see how much power I have, right? Because I'm going here. It's not just the my whole body going up, right? So if he's doing that to me, right? Right? So, the way that we normally traditionally do this, don't kill yourself either, right? Go, right? Still pop, right? See how I'm using it? I just shift at the same time. You know, so, 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 so here, here. I turn. Same way we block the straight punches. Why? Because I'm taking it off the center line. Right? If it's here, I'm going to damage it. If it's here, see it right now because we were focusing on this. So we're focusing on this. We're focusing on this. But look at this. Two things here. One, to get you power. But also, if I go like this and you pop my own, and then you go to punch. Cup. From cup, you go right into front cup. 
Now, like I said, if you were to your hands up, I'm talking about this. If I just went cup, you might just cover up. Or you might use the, you know, the Gua, Joan, the Horizon, Palm, and Block. Right? That's a different thing. But if, let's say you went off a jab, and I went Gua, Cup, so you're not going to have a chance to use either one of those. So what happens is you move back, right? Try to slip it. So then I have a couple of options. Right? Let's say he goes to punch. Right? Or let's say he did jab. And when I miss, because he slipped back here, he tried to grab my arm. So then I do the front top here. And I go out. Now, if I'm here, don't just grab this way, right? Because there's not much control here. Grab my elbows here, because then it's like it's going. Here, right, you can jerk me down. Right, you can try to twist me into an arm bar. So, that's why I need to do this. I turn this into the farm pound motion which is thumb down and uh, in the hammer part up. And you see how I come here? Now you're not in control, right? If I leave you here, you're in control. Yeah. So I do this. And then here I can get you in the groin with the palate, get you in the thing right underneath. The answer is when I'm here, again, see how it comes? Now if I just miss, you know, he might boom and I just missed, maybe it's also set up and I set it up because this is like, it's like a winder. Or if you went with that punch, like I said, see how I can do that? I can come in. Then I can use this at you again, I can use this at showing I can use the power, I can use the power here. You go uh, jab, and I go block. I want you to think about the follow-ups. Right, come to again. So again, what we talk about with the strikes a lot of times is the geometry of it, like being, being an east-west or a west-east line, right? Right, and I said that cup used to be just straight down, but it really became a 45, right? And gua is on that line too, right? Gua is on that line too. So, I mean, I'm going to show you some stuff like there's, there's hammering on the top, but first, one that we're the next line that we're going to talk about before we get there is the like the north south line, you know, the up and down, the perpendicular to the floor line, but from the bottom up as opposed to the top down. One of the ways that you come from the bottom up is the wing flap. Right? It comes underneath your chin. Now to do this, I'm going to turn. I'm going to cross my arms. And I'm going to come up. And I'm using both arms, even though in application I wouldn't be doing that. But I'm developing power, and I'm learning how to use my whole body. Cross, come up. Now I'm hitting palm down with the back of my knuckles up. This is pocket. Right now, right now you can think of it as just cross and open. But you can also think of it as this motion, almost like like a hook. When you do this though, you notice, I'm turning to my left, my right arm is on the outside. If I turn to my right, my left arm is on the outside, come underneath. Slow case. So in other words, if I turn this way, right, it's kind of like I'm slipping, or I'm slipping. So I'm here, and I come underneath to catch you, so, in other words, it's Boom. Traditionally also, it sometimes was thought of as boom, right? And especially if I get you right behind the elbow. But I can also go to the inside. Boom. Surprisingly, if I do that into your liver, it's also going to hurt. And of course, if I bend down and go boom, <laughs> right? One of the first techniques I was going to talk about was kneeling and doing this, right? So come on to this side so you see it from a different angle. So in other words, I can go here, boom, that's underneath his chin, or come here, boom, hit him underneath, 
underneath. Sometimes also just in there, it's not perfect. Right? I go to the inside. Boom. Boom, my hurt too. And of course, if I kneel a little bit, which is hard for me to do with my, my bad foot, but you see what I'm saying? Just come up and in. Also, though, let's say you have your hands up fighting stance, right? Let's say I went book and you duck. I go book. See what I'm saying? Fight like this kind of stuff and you duck. Duck. So in other words, that's, that's when you think of this. So it can be slip and wing flap, slip, wing flap, obviously against the cross, I can slip, right? I can catch you there, catch you there, catch you there. But also he's taking the duck. Duck. Okay? It's not just this. Really make sure I get the metal straight. Right? Okay, see, I'm getting some press. Right, again, if I just caught you right underneath the chin with that, it would not be pleasant. 